I looked at the the map real quick one day, and I saw the counties that the 37th was going through and the states right. it was going through, and I knew them to be le- less less of of sightings area. So what I and I realized most people ask me this at conventions over the last year. Oh, you know? okay. Oh, what about that? You know, and I said, look, I said. Uh, the top 10 states, most of them are up around the Great Lakes. If there's anything, it's up there. And, and that's where the 40 sec, 40, 40th, 41st, 42nd parallels are, you know. Um, the one parallel that had the most yeah. was uh, actually down south next to the 30, th- 33rd. It was the 34th parallel. It had 614. This is 1918, uh, 19, um, this is 2018 data. Okay. So, you know. But uh, like I said, as soon as we're done up doing an, we're doing a major update on the database. We're correcting the spelling on all the cities, and correcting all the county data, and we've got a good golden uh, golden uh, mailing list now. And uh, we've been adding lat longitude information to it. It's slow going. I'm twenty thousand records into a hundred and forty seven thousand record database, so it it's going to take a while. But uh, we think it's going to be another two man months before we're I'm done with it. Because I, I got to travel and everything. So. Well, yeah. And that being said, I am I'm just really looking forward to getting to see you if I can manage to get to the thirty second. Ozark Mountain UFO Conference, and I hate that I'm going to miss you this week at Mega, at the UFO MegaCon. You've well, got you so know, many I, people that are going to be there with you, too. That's going to be a fantastic event, just some like amazing Ozark. People. Yep. Amazing people. Yeah, I, I, I was, I'm really blown away by some of the people that are going to be there. So uh, it should be interesting. Uh, like I said, I thought I was the only one coming in on Tuesday, but apparently a few other people had schedule problems and couldn't get in. So uh, I, I'm looking – my bag is packed. Um, it's literally in the in the, uh, in the the sewing room laying on the couch in there, and it's, uh, it's all packed, ready to go. Uh, so we'll see where this goes. You know, well, I think you're going art, to have a ball. I hope so. I hope so. You know, with all the stuff we're, uh, all the stuff I've written, uh, the would you like to know about the oldest UFO sighting in New York State? Without a doubt. Yes. 1790. 1790. Really? Yeah. Uh, Who was it? Was, it? Um, uh, we don't. I don't know the man's name. Or I mean, what uh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, th- th- that's even harder. Uh, but let me describe it. Um, this guy was a Dutch settler up in what they call Scalary County, which is up near Albany, New York, up the Hudson there. There was a lot of Dutch settlers up there. Now, they, right. they referred to him as German, but it wasn't German as much as he was Deutsch, and which was actually Dutch. Right. You know? And um, you go up there, and a lot of towns have German names, okay, or, or Dutch names. Mm-hmm. So um, this guy, uh, it was summertime. He was playing his fiddle on his back porch of his cabin. And he heard this thunderous roar. And he looked up and he noticed coming from the north, the sky was lit up. This was near dusk. And then something came down a couple hundred yards from the from where he was. Now, he said it was so bright that he could have gotten down on his knees and picked up pins like it was high noon. It was that bright. Wow. Okay. And this thing was out there. It was long. It was kind of, it, it was long and kind of tapered off. And at the front, what he thought was the front end, it's sort of like a, tr- looked like a tree uprooted. So imagine if you hold your arm out with your fingers, like in a claw position, that's kind of what right. it looked like. Um, it, because it was so hot, it sparked. And he referred to it in the write-up that he swore out to the Carlisle County um, clerk's office two years later when he came into town for marketing purposes. And he said that it sparked like a welding iron. And a welding iron in those days was a, essentially a hot soldering iron. They, they, they got good red hot, you know, you know, you know. Like in a blacksmith. Uh, in a blacksmith kind of oven right. kind of thing. And it sparked. He said it hovered about three, four feet off the ground. And it was about as big around as a, as a full-grown hog. And when it started to move, it moved at the speed of a galloping horse. When it came to the bottom of a small hill, it rose up and went up and over the hill and was gone. 
he said the area after that after that thing landed, so to speak, uh, smelt like tar and sulfur for three weeks. Wow. So back then they were noisy. Different propulsion well, systems. Well, at least this thing was, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, it, it's it's interesting. I, we found it to be an interesting story. It came to us through the uh, one of the historical societies, and uh, we found it quite fascinating. I actually had a guy that I know does artwork for a comic book. He drew me a couple of art cells that I could put into my PowerPoint presentation when I when I talk about it. Um, uh, we had another one. Uh, it's uh, set probably in the nineteen. Um, uh, 1934. I ha- I actually got to interview the lady. She's in her late 80s right now, and uh, she runs a horse farm. But back in the day, back on, in 1934, uh, she went to a Thanksgiving dinner in Binghamton, New York, w- with her grandmother and her parents. Okay, and her grandparents were there. There was at their house to drive back out to where she lived called Waverly. Now would take about. 30 minutes on the on the uh, eight lane or this four lane highway, right? Interstate. Uh, in those days, the back road, it, it was about a two and a half hour drive. Okay. And they were, they were driving up over Hill, over Dale, you know, past cow pastures and things. And at one point she was about eight years old. She, they come up over a hill and she said, daddy, daddy, stop. There's a, there's a Greyhound bus out in the field. Oh my stopped goodness. Car. He stopped the car. He got out. She got out. Mom stayed in the car. Now, she was in her Sunday best, she said. And they both climbed over the fence. And out there in the field was this saucer-shaped thing with a big row of windows around it. It was gray. And so it sort of looked like a Greyhound bus, you know. And um, so what happened was um, they were watching it. And uh, suddenly the pe- little people who were, work- were outside of it got into it. The thing flashed hovered for a second and it went straight up at incredible speed. Um, dad and her dad and her wrote, oh. ran back to the car. Her mother was screaming her bloody head off. Oh my okay, gosh. Ter- ter- terrified. Of course, you know, she's in her Sunday best and they're out there in a the cow field. She's stepping in cow patties, da 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 da. So um, uh, they drove home and her parents would never ever speak about it again. At all? At all. Oh my gosh. And she confessed it to me. Uh, we talked on the phone, um, had co- essentially coffee on the phone for the better part of two hours and discussed it. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and, and that was the, that was uh, 1934 in uh, Waverly, uh, Tioga County, New York. And um, uh, I showed her a couple of pictures and a, a, sh- a shape ship, ver- a ship very much shaped like the one on the front of my book. Uh, was kind of what she saw out there, a big gray thing with a lot of windows around right. the center. And that's what Bar- Betty and Barney Hill experienced. That kind right. Of thing. So um, that t- that type of silhouette. Um, uh, there was another lady who said, I know we're almost out of time here. Oh, we're, we've lady, got a whole four and a half minutes. Okay, there was another lady who said, I saw this in National UFO Reporting Center, that she said she saw this at the... Um, at the uh, uh, Chicago World's Fair, okay, in 1939. And now I'm a, I'm a live action role player, so I'm a bit of a retro person. I, I know a lot about other periods of time, so to uh-huh. speak, because I, I play, you know, uh, dress up in armor some weekends, dress up like Indiana Jones other weekends, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, suddenly, uh, suddenly, about four o'clock in the morning, after I had read that story, I kind of opened my eyes at about four o'clock in the morning and said, there wasn't a World's Fair in Chicago in 1939. Okay. So I did some checking and there had been a thing called the uh, Century of Progress uh, Expo in Chicago, but it was uh, a year or so before. I did some research and thinking, well, maybe I heard one of these things had the Graf Zeppelin come and visit, you know, from Germany. Right. And I checked yeah. it, but the, the month was wrong. Hmm. Okay, so I managed to get the brochures for both events. They were available as PDFs online. 
And it turned out to be the New York City 1939 World's Fair because in this woman's description, she talks about a beautiful symphony watching colored lights, a, a water display, you know, one of those dancing fountains kind dancing of thing fa- mm-hmm. with colored lights and gas jets and things. And um, that indeed was in New York's in May of 1939 at the opening week of the New York uh, World's Fair uh, at, the New, at the World's Fair in New York City in 1939, and um, I even described it. And uh, what they said happened was it was overcast that night, and during the symphony, they saw bright light come down low in the overcast and hover over them for 20 minutes, and then took off. That would totally get your attention. Yeah. So it it took a ton of research. It was a big article. When I wrote the article, it was a big article, had a lot of graphics because uh, it was it was fascinating. Right. Had to do do a lot of detective work on it. Well, but at least you knew how to do that. Yeah. And that I got to I've got to ask you. Yeah, I tried to share some of the events that you're going to be doing this this season that have come up so far. But tell people where they can find you. If they want to reach out to you or, or check out more of your work. Okay. Um, if they Google Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, Costa, C-O-S-T-A, at SyracuseNewTimes.com, SyracuseNewTimes.com, um, if they, you'll find one of my articles, Okay. And uh, when you get into, if you get on the navigation bar, you hover over blogs, it'll drop down window, you'll see the one there for the UFO thing, click on it. You'll get whatever the current article is. If you go down in the lower left hand corner, there's like a link down there for New York skies, you click on that, and it will take you into a, a page which will essentially give you about 20 articles per page and there's about four and a half of my five years worth of articles in there. And they're all good. I didn't uh, find co- any of them I couldn't stand. So <laughs> we, we covered the range of things. Um, the you do. You're very are, diverse. The the places that are um, well, you have to have something to write about. You know, um, uh, the place that I'm doing um, I'm good doing the Ozarks like you talked about. I'm doing Phoenix uh, Phoenix Mufon in May May 11th. I'm at Pine Bush, New York on May 18th. Oh, I would love to see Pine Bush. That Pine Bush is cool. And uh, doing the um, doing the MUFON symposium. Uh, this is the fiftieth anniversary symposium, so it's going to be a big blowout. Yes, I'm going to be is. speaking on Friday there uh, in uh, in July, uh, and then I'm doing the Michigan UFO contact at at uh, Ho- uh, Houghton Lake uh, in September, and then the Greater uh, Greater New England UFO Conference in Lowmaster, Massachusetts has us has Lynn, both Linda and I in October. So it's going to be a rowdy year. And that doesn't even count the fact that right now um, we're about a heartbeat from signing a contract for a national television program. Oh, uh, I will be watching. We've, we've I would love to con- see that. We've got to get the contract first. But uh, the proposal and the pitch was wonderful. We've been going back and forth with a couple of the, We had six networks bidding on us at one point with the seventh network who said, I don't care who gets it. We, we want the international rights, that kind of thing. Cool so beans. Got, That's pretty we've flattering. Got, we've got a very different kind of UFO show because most of the other ones are going back to the same old thing back in the 70s, 80s, 90, uh, back in the 40s, you know, all that kind of stuff. We've got all 21st century information and we have forensics. Well, you know, you... Oh, we're out of time. I was just going to say that it, people want to know the current things. You're going to have to come back because we have to talk about that, too. Okay, anytime. So, because, you know, I enjoy our conversations. This is our second time, and this was just as great as the first. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I just enjoy you. And Thank you very much. Safe travels out to Nevada, and be careful on that drive from Vegas. So yeah, you're yeah. going to have a ball. I know you will. I'm looking forward to it. All right. And to all of our listeners, everyone out there, thank you so much for joining us because you know what? You're the reason we do these shows. I look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget, Monday is Paranormal Pride. Tuesday, we're out. Wednesday is Paranormal Experienced with moi. Thursday is Periscope Uncensored. Friday... Well, Friday is busy. Friday is Paraversal Universe from 4 to 6 Eastern. 
Nope, that's Central, 5 to 7 Eastern. Then right behind that at from 8 to 9 Eastern is Ghost Talk Radio with 187 PI. Then, immediately following that is Tripping the Void with Seraphine Hurley. So, you know what? We've got you covered. Don't forget.